You've probably heard a lot of people say that their favorite sports league is rigged, probably because a call was just made against their team in any given game. The NBA is different though. In an NBA game, on average, referees are calling fouls almost once per minute. In many situations, more than any other sport, an NBA game is decided by the officiating. In this analysis, we have to talk about the where, the when, and the why. But first, we have to address the how. If you're an NBA fan out there watching this and you're thinking, no way the NBA could rig a game, stop lying to yourself. In the flow of a game, there are so many momentum shifts and moments in which the refs can take the opportunity to turn the tide. A missed foul call for one team, an undeserved and one for the other. A block versus a charge, sending one team to the free throw line over and over again. There's so many ways an NBA official can influence a game. And if you're still sitting there thinking that this could never happen, it kind of already has. On July 27, 2007, the FBI came knocking at the door of NBA official Tim Donaghy. Donaghy was arrested on charges of illegal gambling. The story came to light that Tim Donaghy was working with the mob, rigging NBA games and making a huge profit. Donaghy's story is a stain on the NBA, and according to him, he's not the only guilty party. While still behind bars, Donaghy wrote a tell-all book to uncover all the corruption that was happening in the league, entitled Blowing the Whistle, The Culture of Fraud in the NBA. Before its release, however, Random House Publishing chose to cancel the tell-all book after a conversation with the NBA where they heavily insinuated that if the book contained any libel, they better be prepared for war. We can't speculate on what we would have heard from this book, but we may have gotten a sneak peek based off a court document filed by Donaghy's attorney in 2008. The document claims that two referees working for the NBA rigged Game 6 of the 2002 Western Conference Finals between the Lakers and the Kings. The Lakers have always been one of the most marketable teams in the league, and with Prime Shaq and Kobe in 2002, you could see why it would make sense for the NBA to make sure that they got to the finals. I think we can all agree that in theory, sending Shaq and Kobe to the finals over the Sacramento Kings would benefit the NBA. David Stern was even once quoted as saying his dream finals matchup would be Lakers versus Lakers. The question is, do we believe it? We already asked and answered if it's possible to read a game. And well, it is. Looking at this series, specifically Game 6, it's easy to see why it gets so much scrutiny. In the fourth quarter of Game 6, the Lakers got a whopping 27 free throws in the fourth quarter, more than the Kings had for the entire game. There's a few specific plays in the final stretch that can't be ignored. A missed and one call on Chris Webber would have put the Kings up five with three minutes left, and instead it was called for an offensive foul. Then on the other end, Vlade Diva clearly gets a steal and gets fouled. But he's called for his sixth personal foul, sending him away from the game and sending the LA Lakers to the free throw line to tie it all up. Add in a bogus shooting foul on a clean Weber block and an egregious no call on Kobe Elbow and Mike Bibby in the face and LA forces game seven. History agrees, the refs blew this game. We know from Tim Donaghy that the referees have the ability to rig games, and we know from David Stern that the league wanted the Lakers in the finals that year. The evidence is kind of piling up, but we're going to need more than this one game to prove anything. That brings us to the 2001 Eastern Conference Finals between the Bucks and the Sixers. If you don't want to hear from us why this series was rigged, just listen to what Ray Allen had to say. He said, quote, it behooves everybody for the league to make more money, and the league knows that Philadelphia is going to make more money with LA than we would with LA. Nine times out of ten, when you have a referee, you know there's going to be no biases. But in the back of everyone's heads, it's like Philadelphia and the MVP needs to play in these finals. Allen and his coach George Carl both emphatically claimed that this series was rigged, with their comments amounting to $85,000 in fines. This isn't some Kyrie Irving, the world is flat conspiracy theory. There's some actual depth to this. The series finished with Philly receiving nine less technicals, five less flagrants, and shooting 46 more free throws. Glenn Robinson, Milwaukee's second best scorer, didn't even see the free throw line until game five. One game, Scott Williams received a flagrant call that didn't even get him kicked out of the game, only for Bucks fans to see that exact same call get him completely disqualified for game seven of that series. The Bucks seemed like they had games one and four in the bag before some pretty awful officiating down the stretch carried Philly to victory. A lot of arguing ever since that call that was not made down the other end. Now you've just totally taken away any chance of victory. Absolutely. The fans are walking out. If you ask any fan, they could probably name off a dozen games which they felt like were rigged against their favorite team. And if you ask a Dallas Mavericks fan, they'll have a very specific answer for you. The Mavericks quickly went up 2-0 on the Heat in the 2006 NBA Finals. With the series heading back to Miami, many expected a sweep, 
Our friend Tim Donaghy may not be the most trustworthy source, but he's made a lot of comments on this series that we cannot ignore. An excerpt from his book Personal Foul explains that the league would literally not allow a sweep in this series, citing the millions of dollars that would be lost in network revenue. Apparently, the league had a clear agenda to even up the series in Miami. But deeper than that, Donaghy claims that the league and plenty of officials all had mixed feelings about Mark Cuban. In the 2003 and 2006 playoffs, the Mavericks were 1-10 in, in games refereed by Dan Crawford, who Donaghy claimed hated Cuban and bragged about making Dallas lose. In Game 5 of this finals, Dwayne Wade had 25 free throws. The rest of the Heat had an additional 24. The Dallas Mavericks only counted for 25 total. In Game 6, Dwayne Wade had 20 free throws, giving Miami 37 in total compared to the Mavericks 23. And who else do we see officiating this game six but Dan Crawford? If you won't take it from Tim Donaghy or us, take it from Mark Cuban and former FBI agent Mike Flagg. That's right. Mark Cuban was so infuriated about that finals loss that he hired ex-FBI agent Mike Flagg to investigate the league and that series for evidence that was rigged. Reportedly, Flagg told Cuban that if he sued the league, he would absolutely win. The only thing that stopped the lawsuit is that it would devalue the league and therefore Mark Cuban's team. Those three playoff series contain some of the best evidence that league officials could be influencing the outcome of those series. But taking in all those examples, it'd still be impossible for us to say that the NBA predetermines the outcome of every game. What's more likely is that the league pushes their agenda as subtly as possible, nudging the narrative to be the most profitable. Take Draymond Green getting suspended in the 2016 NBA Finals. He's going around kicking guys in the nuts, so it makes sense to suspend him and it gets the series to seven games. Let's say somehow Golden State goes down 3-0 in that series. Are they going to suspend Draymond for that game four on a retroactive flagrant call? I'm going to bet no. Today, we see superstars getting to the free throw line more than ever. Now, is James Harden the most talented foul drawer in the NBA? Yes. Now, would James Harden be making headlines for his scoring performances and 30-point game streaks and all these things if he wasn't averaging 12 free throws a game? Probably not. The point is, if the NBA wanted to push a Harden MVP agenda, they can. Easily. And if they want a primetime game to be close going down the stretch, they can. Easily. And if they want a playoff series to go an extra game or two for more TV ratings, they can. Easily. This century, the amount of influence and control NBA referees can have over the game has gone up drastically. The more the NBA embraces flopping or drawing in people for foul calls, the more control they set themselves up to have. So, is the NBA rigged? I'm going to say for the most part, probably not. But definitely, 100%, it has happened and does happen. Maybe not for the course of an entire playoff series, but if you're still sitting there wondering, how does James Harden have 50 points and 11 for 37 shooting? You know how, and you know why.